We have talked about crystal structures and imperfection in, imperfections in crystal structures, etc. Uh, however, we didn't really address why the solids form a crystal structure to start with. Well, the solids are stable structures and therefore there must be interactions between atoms that holds the crystal together. So uh, what is the source of this interaction? It is mostly electrostatic such that different bonding schemes of atoms can be linked to the differences in the distribution of valence electrons and uh, ion cores. So uh, the source of the crystal uh, interaction is mostly electrostatic. So that's what's holding the atoms together. Um, so when we have atoms that are uh, free to move in any direction, and when we have a solid crystal, we have to compare the energies of these two situations. A solid crystal is a stable structure since the crystal energy is lower compared to an arrangement of fully isolated free atoms. So when these atoms come together to form a crystal, that, uh, there is a force that pulls them together. Those are the interatomic forces. And once a crystal forms, uh, if we talk about the energy required to pull the crystal apart, have free atoms at zero Kelvin at rest at infinite separation from them. This is the theoretical definition of cohesive energy or binding energy. So how much is this cohesive or binding energy? It's um, typically 1 to 10 electron volts per atom, except in inert gas crystals, uh, it's much weaker. It's about 0.1 eV per atom. So we define the energy required to pull the crystal apart and have free atoms at rest at infinite separation as the cohesive energy or binding energy. Now, <clears throat> having said that, uh, when we talk about atoms at rest, uh, there is a quantum correction to the definition of cohesive energy that comes from the Heisenberg uncertainty. Now, Heisenberg uncertainty, you will remember, is a, a spontaneous... Uh, if we have a measurement of position and uh, momentum uh, that are performed simultaneously, uh, the uncertainty in the position measurement multiplied with the uncertainty in the momentum measurement is greater or equal to h bar over 2. So this implies that if an atom is confined to a region uh, which has uh, a delta x range, then its momentum is bound to lie in a range uh, greater or equal to h bar over 2 delta x. And if you look at the kinetic energy of the particle, uh, the free particle, it will be delta Px squared divided by twice its mass. So it's um, h bar squared. So this is greater or equal to h bar squared over 8m delta x squared. You can see that m enters this uh, Heisenberg's uncertainty. So therefore, this effect is especially uh, strong when we have a small mass because it's at the denominator. So we will have a greater dispersion in the energy. So the requirement, quantum requirement, uh, that we obtain from Heisenberg's uncertainty is known as zero-point kinetic energy and is, uh, as you can see, because of this factor M here, uh, it's going to be dominant for uh, light atoms. Uh, for example, it's dominant for helium. So this explains why there is no helium solid at zero Kelvin and one under one atmospheric pressure uh, that's the zero point kinetic energy or quantum correction to the definition of cohesive energy that gives us this result. For other uh, atoms, this is a very small correction. Now, if you want to compare the cohesive energy or binding energy of uh, atoms, uh, this can be inferred, inferred from an indirect measurement of melting temperature and bulk modulus. So melting temperature is the temperature at which the solid turns into a liquid form and bulk modulus uh, is basically an elastic modulus uh, constant that, def that tells us if you have a change in pressure applied to the solid, how much the change, the relative change in the volume will be. So these are both good indicators of uh, relative cohesive energies. So if the bond is very strong, uh, the cohesive energy is 
basically uh, love that means it's uh, more negative uh, then we will have a harder uh, it will become harder to break these bonds and therefore to melt so we have the following result a high cohesive energy implies a high melting point a high cohesive energy as in uh, the magnitude so it's low because it's more negative uh, energy that uh, that uh, is compared to the energy of free atoms and high cohesive energy also implies high bulk modulus or low compressibility which is one over the bulk uh, modulus that means it's going to be harder to change the uh, volume of the sample uh, by applying pressure now if you look at the po total potential energy that represents the interaction between atoms this typically looks like uh, the following graph the potential energy as a function of distance between atoms r uh, is basically coming down until it reaches a minimum and then it goes up asymptotically reaches uh, zero so the part uh, that basically represents the positive uh, portion of the potential energy is uh, repulsive the energy is positive and the part that is uh, representing the negative portion of the energy is attractive uh, so we find that if the atoms are too close together are less than r0 you can see that the the derivative of potential energy with respect to the position of the atoms will be negative therefore the force between them will be positive so this is going to be repulsive on the other hand if you look at the slope of um, u versus r for r greater than r0 the slope is positive uh, therefore the force is negative so it's attractive so we will have attractive interaction between atoms on the other hand if you look at the equilibrium position of the atoms at r0 the amount of energy you have to apply to, pu to pull them apart to infinite separation so r becomes infinite that is the difference between the minimum energy that you observe here and zero energy so that's called u0 the cohesive energy of the crystal so once again the minimum energy occurs at r equals r0 that is the equilibrium distance between atoms and the corresponding energy u0 is the cohesive energy this r0 value is of the order of a few angstroms and you can infer the force between the atoms from minus the gradient of potential energy which tells us the force of interaction so for r less than r0 the force is positive it's repulsive for r greater than r0 the force is negative it's an attractive interaction between atoms now what is the origin of the attractive force between atoms it depends on the electron configuration and distribution uh, so we have uh, many different possible sources but the repulsive force uh, this is pretty much the same for all uh, kinds of bonding between atoms the repulsive, repulsive force is mainly due to Pauli exclusion principle so what is the Pauli exclusion principle if you bring these atoms together uh, there will be uh, at some point there will be overlap of electron wave functions and electrons will want to occupy the same orbital because two electrons cannot have the same set of quantum numbers i.e. they cannot op uh, occupy the same orbital and have the same energy as atoms approach the orbits of the atoms electrons begin to overlap and electrons attempt to occupy the same orbital but they are forced to occupy higher energy orbitals due to Pauli exclusion principle and Pauli exclusion principle also has to do with uh, electrostatic interaction between electrons so that is Coulomb interaction that's the source uh, so we find that these electrons will occupy higher energy orbitals that means the energy of the system will increase if the uh, if the action of bringing atoms together is increasing the energy of the system this is a repulsive interaction the repulsive energy can be written in two different forms it can be written as uh, a r to the power n we will see that usually n is uh, 12 it's sufficiently large a is a constant or it can be written as an exponential lambda e to the minus r over rho 
and lambda and r are constants and r is the distance uh, between atoms. Uh, on the other hand, the attractive interatomic forces will lead to the bonding. So what is the <coughs> mechanism of bonding? We will see that in inert gas crystals, the bonding is weak. It is due to Van der Waals force, the electrostatic forces between fluctuating dipoles. This happens in neon, argon, etc. Again, helium is excluded here due to zero point uh, kinetic energy, quantum correction. In ionic crystals, where we have uh, ionis, ionized atoms, an electron is released to the lattice. Uh, we have different electronegativities. For example, think about sodium chloride, the table salt. Uh, sodium plus and chlorine minus uh, ions interact uh, to form sodium chloride structure. It's ionic bonding and it's due to electrostatic interaction uh, between ions. So we have ionic bonding that is due to electrostatic interaction between ions. And we have Van der Waals interaction that is due to electrostatic forces in between fluctuating dipoles. In metals, uh, we have a different situation. There is a sea of mobile electrons. Uh, the metallic bonding that we observe in metals is due to the electrostatic interaction between ions dispersed in the sea of electrons. So the metallic bonding in metals is due to electrostatic interaction between ions dispersed in a sea of electrons. Uh, we also have neutral atoms that are not ionized uh, forming um, crystals and now we have the source of the um, interaction as covalent bonding that is sharing of electrons and overlaps of electronic orbitals so we, we see that these valence electrons will be shared uh, to form the full uh, outmost shell of the atoms and therefore the covalent bonding uh, between the atoms will occur and it will um, keep them together. So in summary, um, when we talk about the mechanism that holds the crystal together, it's the, the source is mostly electrostatic. Um, the, the source of attractive interaction uh, can be due to ionic bonding, metallic bonding, covalent bonding, but they're all some sort of electrostatic interaction. And the source of the repulsive interaction uh, between atoms is uh, Pauli exclusion principle, which is also an electrostatic interaction, Coulomb interaction. The electrons cannot have the same set of quantum numbers when you bring the atoms together. Electrons will start occupying higher energy orbitals and increase the energy of the crystal. Now, exactly the amount of energy we have to provide to the crystal in order to break these bonds, pull the atoms apart at zero Kelvin and make them free and at rest at infinite separation, that is the cohesive energy or binding energy, which is roughly 1 to 10 electron volts per atom, uh, but it's very weak in inert gas crystals, 0.1 eV per atom. And, um, there is a zero point quantum correction, kinetic energy, that is due to Heisenberg's uncertainty, which is um, which becomes eminent when we have a low uh, mass of the atoms. So that is basically the case for helium at zero Kelvin and one atmospheric pressure. Helium is not a solid. Melting temperature and bulk modulus are good indicators. If we have high cohesive energy, that is, it is the crystal is very stable. Uh, high cohesive energy is uh, is uh, is as in it is more negative uh, energy potential energy in the crystal. So then there will be a high melting point and high bulk modulus and low compressibility. The attraction for uh, the distance between atoms less than the equilibrium distance is repulsive. Greater is attractive. And as you can see, when we bring them together, we obtain this graph, which is basically called the Leonard-Jones potential. And the cohesive energy is exactly the amount of energy we have to provide to the crystal uh, from its equilibrium point to infinite separation. So that is what is shown as U0 in this graph. And this R0 value is of the order of a few angstroms. Um, and uh, the repulsive interaction, Pauli exclusion uh, principle interaction, is empirically modeled as an exponential decay with distance lambda times e to the minus r over rho, or a over r to the n, where a is a constant, n is sufficiently large 
it is uh, mostly close to 12 um, and uh, well, well this can change depending on the the crystal it's a, a fitting parameter basically and uh, lambda and rho are also constants the attractive forces on the other hand lead to bonding so van der Waals electrostatic interaction between fluctuating dipoles is the mechanism in inert gas crystals um, the electrostatic interaction between ions in ionic crystals so the, the this which is formed of atoms with different electronegativities like sodium plus and chlorine minus in metals we have um, ions that are dispersed uh, in a sea of mobile electrons so interaction between them electrostatic interaction between them forms the metallic bond and the neutral atoms sharing of valence electrons to form a full outpost shell leads to covalent bonding